Hi, and thanks for joining us on a spectacular summer edition. It's finally here, A Few Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P. I'm Rocky Holland. And I am pleased to be joined by a friend, uh, Mr. Tom Fiore, budgetary guru over at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a problem with your taxes, it's probably because of Tom, but uh, <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. But Tom, I want to thank you for joining us. I know we've had drinks for many years, uh, just enjoying wine, and I've asked you for many years to be on the show, and I want to thank you for being on the show. And you now join the ranks of Mr. Tom, uh, Scott Slifka, Jonathan Harris, Ben Barnes, oh, well. Mark Ojakian, Chris Williams, and my friend Ray and Katie Hardman, who are both opera singers, and Ray Harden actually is on the uh, um, NPR. Okay. So thank you. I didn't know I was with such a yeah, you are, group. Yes. Okay. You're a rarefied form. <laughs> Don't mess anything up. Right? <laughs> I'll okay. try not to. <laughs> so uh, summer's here finally. As you can see, I already have my tan. And um, we're going to be doing some, hopefully, summer favorites on the show tonight. And Rocky has a couple. I have a couple. And we have one we might get to at the end. And what, I went, what I'm going for to start off the summer, Rocky and Tom, is Spanish. And I thought I would start off this summer with Spanish refreshing rosés. So my first one tonight is the Besa del Sol. It is Spain's most popular sparkling rosé. That does not mean does it's necessarily mean? going to is be good. Well, we're about it to find could out. be their Miller Lite or Budweiser of Spain, which just means it's cheap and easy to drink. We don't know. We will find out, though. And um, I picked up about four bottles of this just prior to the start of spring, mm -hmm. sight unseen. Um, you can buy these locally, I think. Uh, I'm not in West Hartford, around the area. They still should have some. And it did say that it had an essence of strawberry to it, which may or may not be good. So we're going to start off. Yeah. Rock, I'll let you do your first little pour down there on your Just end. to uh, point of reference, I believe that the most popular wine in America is Barefoot Moscato. Oh, you see, oh, Moscato, Moscato, oh my God. I'll give myself a little bit of a pour there. Sure. Let me go next, Bob. Just a small splash. I mean, okay. if you don't like it, that's what that other glass is for, Tom. You can okay. just pour it right in there. Perfect. Thank you. And you can see it's a very festive, summery-looking bottle. So, I mean... It's very summery. It's yeah. going to look good in a cooler like or on a patio or a picnic table. Look at this. Tom I mean, didn't waste any time. Was I supposed to do cheers or something? There's no, <laughs> no, I, I, I there's love no the enthusiasm. I love are, uh, the enthusiasm. <laughs> You didn't even have yeah, to look at it. Yourself. Just, Damn, you I'm drinking that right now. You can drink right out of the bottle uh, if you want to. Uh, We're not going to judge you. I don't know. What are you getting first? It smells pretty good. Like, Is this I'm, strawberry? Raspberry? I'm getting a lot of strawberry and maybe cherry. That's what it is. Which is uh, for rosé. Normally you get watermelon in rosé. It does have a candied... That's interesting. The smell is stronger than the, the flavor a little that, bit. Yeah. It, yeah, every now and then you get a wine that's like that, and I would 100% agree on that. Get a little it, watermelon there. The flavor, the yeah, there's definitely water. Uh, that's like a watermelon Jolly Rancher, isn't it? I can see why that could be popular, especially Spain. It's, it's a relatively hot country, right? Most of the year it's relatively warm. Correct, yeah. That's a very refreshing uh, sparkling rosé. That is what we call, uh, Tom, on this show, a porch pounder. Patio pounder. Yeah. Patio yeah. pounder, yes. Yeah. Just that's keep drinking you it. Can just, <laughs> it's, almost like, it's almost like a beer. This is a dangerous because mm -hmm. it doesn't even... The alcohol content is on this. This is... I can't imagine. A 10.5. too terribly high. Yeah, that's, okay. that sounds about right. Yeah. Hmm. And you've got to think, some beers at this point uh, have, have right. alcohol contents that are that high. Right. So that's a relatively low alcohol wine. Uh, very refreshing. I, very, very dangerous. This mm -hmm. is... <laughs> What do you think, Tom? I know you've had some experience with some sparklings and rosés. What, what do you think this one fits into your palate? I, I just felt it was a little sweet to me. A little you did too, think it was sweet? Yeah, a little too sweet. I, but, and I generally like sweet things, but that was just, yeah, I think a little on the, too far on the sweet so side. So you'd probably say if this was warm, wouldn't probably be something you would drink too no, much. I, no, I don't think so. No. I would probably think this wouldn't hold up very good either, I would, on the warmer side. I wouldn't think so. No, I mean, this is, this is something that if I were served it at a party, I would definitely drink it, but I'm not going to seek it out at a store. Right. It is, it's, it's, to me, it's, I don't know if sweet, it's, but it's got that Jolly Rancher kind of quality that's just, what do you call it, Bobby, cloying. It's, it's, it almost just kind of... Uh, it's funny, because what, what I notice about this particular one is I found the smell very yeah. cloying on my nostrils. But the flavor, I thought, dissipated a little bit. It's like a popsicle. <laughs> it was sort of like an effervescent popsicle. Mm. And uh, I still get a little watermelon in the back of my throat from this. So. Yeah, there's a lot of watermelon on this. What do you mean it's by cloying? Cloying yeah, is just kind of like what it... What it um, like a little oily, like if you get... Uh, okay. um, if you breathe in something that's sort of like, say you're having a hot fajitas or something, all that smoke, yes, get okay. that sort of in your nostrils and yep. stuff, and it sort of sticks there. Okay. 
Um, I just found the smell of this very strong yeah. when I smelled it. Not in a bad way. Some people might like it. It's very strong strawberry forward. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's definitely a summer patio porch pounder. <laughs> and um, the price point of this, I think, is between $9 and eleven ninety nine, which, of course, certainly makes it reasonable mm -hmm. for most yeah. people's budgets. Spanish wines, I mean, in particular, well, Spain, Portugal, you get really great deals in wine there. Mm. So this would... Uh, All right, so I'm going I'm to give that one up an almost thumbs up. It's going to be sort of like a... Thumb it like, quarters. yeah, maybe like at 2 o'clock, somewhere yeah. around there. And I'm gonna, if we have time, I'm going to go back to that one that's warmed up a little bit because to me the most important thing for any summer wine, especially if it's white or rosé or bubbles, it's going to get warm unless you're keeping it cold. Right. So if that sits out on a sunny day and you take a sip, is it still going to be palatable, pal palatable or is it going to be absolutely disgusting? Well, that's to me, most sparkling wines, once they reach room temperature, are not palatable. I don't even care if it's, a lot of people like, when you get into higher end champagnes, they want to drink them at room temperature because you can, you can kind of taste the flavors a little bit better, and you can, but to me that doesn't make the flavor better. I need, I need my sparklers to be cold. Actually, it didn't, it was original champagne, obviously they didn't have refrigerators hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. So how did they really keep it chill, just in, in the cellars or just, it was basically room temperature? I guess they didn't. I mean, you're, you're, yeah, your cellars are going to be somewhere 50s, around 50s. the, yeah, 58 degrees is, is where you want your cellar to be. Or I guess in, in, in France, it would be in the Celsius. I don't know. <laughs> Tom, what color do you keep, uh, what uh, temperature do you keep your uh, Champagne, pocket tuck. Whatever's in the refrigerator. Whatever's in the refrigerator. Okay, so we're ready to move on to the next one. Is it going to be my choice, or is it going to be your favorite? You knock them out, Bobby. So this next one here. This is your show. I'm just is the no. You're more than the host. You are the knowledge. You are the brains. This is the Casa Tell. Make it all up. The Illyria. And I said to the my two friends here that I did not taste this. I actually did have a sample of this when before I bought it. So okay. this is another inexpensive Spanish rosé. It's definitely on the darker side, so I'm very curious to see if it's going to be as powerful as um, some other rosés are. Since this Do is you happen my... to know what the grape is that they used for this? You know, I did write that down. I've got to be careful. I accidentally got some of that in the glass. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting. This is a higher, this is a 12.5% volume um, for a... I mean, it's there? probably Tempranillo if it's... Uh, or Grenache, a bit of a, uh, if it's out of Spain. For I'm a rose. going to assume so. It does not say so in the back here. Okay. Well, it's listed as a dry rose sec. Bobby, I'm so good at this. I'll just taste it. That's right. You can exact, just taste it. I'll tell you the percentage if We're it's a tell blend. Mr. Rocky did recently too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got lucky yesterday. I don't mean that. I mean that in the wine sense, not in the. <laughs> yes, we know. All right, we we can cut that part out, right, guys? No. no okay. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of a kind of a full body rosé. Certainly not light. Coats the mouth, that's for sure. Hmm. Definitely uh, dry. It is dry. It's very fruity. It's got a lot of acid, which is pretty typical of Spanish wines. Uh, what else would I say about this? I, this is this is something that I would uh, definitely buy again. Yeah, it's. Uh, and this, even though it's still a little cold, it has warmed a little bit. It's still pretty good. I can drink this probably even at room temperature. I think this. I typically rosé. drink the Provence rosés, and we're going to <laughs> south of France next. It's going to be roughly the same as Provence. This one, you can see it. It's a lot darker. It's a lot just heavier, and it's got a lot of cherry on it, and it's got some minerality on it. And that's about all I've got to say. I, I'm going to guess that this is probably higher than the 10.5 that we just had. In oh, the yeah. It's, I think it's 12.5 or 12%, Tom. Can you see it from there? Is that 12%? Bob, I should have brought my glasses. It's either 12 or 12.5. 12. 12. 12. It's 12, yes. Which is still pretty high sometimes for rosé. A lot of times you see rosé is a little bit under 12. Okay. But um, this is sort of the kind of rosé that I think is um, satisfying to me. Mm -hmm. It certainly has some character. Some rosés will drop right off really quickly. It's got, a, um, it's got a, a little bit of a, uh, an herbal characteristic, almost, almost kind of grassy, that I'm, that I'm tasting now after having taken the sip earlier. Um, this is a meh for me. This is a probably like sideways. It's not a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I'm going to say thumbs sideways on this one. Uh, this is probably a good pair for summer fair too, I think. Probably, yeah. 
And Tom, I, for your experience with rosés, is this a little on the stronger side? Or I actually it? thought it would. I thought it was a little weaker to me. It seemed, you thought anyways, this was weaker. Yeah, that's at least a, you know. My now, see, this is interesting, Tom, yeah. because the next rosé is lighter. So generally, I, that would be lighter. I'll be on the curious color. to get your take because I, the next one is not only lighter in color; it's a 100 calorie. It's it's marketed as like vegan wine, um, huh. and it is. But I mean. A lot of these low calorie wines that they have out there, they make it low calorie because they just add a bunch of water to it and it's yeah. got like 7% uh. alcohol. This is 12.5% alcohol. It's 100 calories a glass. We liked it so much that we ended up buying a case of it because, you know, I'm, I would like to have lower calories <laughs> going into my body well, you know, whenever really I can. If I'm on enjoy the show it, yeah. in regards to, we've done maybe once or twice over the 12 years of the show, calories that are in wine. I mean, they have light beer, so you generally can see the, the calories that are in a beer. But you never really know what the calories are that are in a wine. We had one wine on this show one time that actually had the full thing like you would see on, on any packaging in a grocery store of, of the calorie content and the, you sure. know, the, the vitamins and all that stuff content on it. But uh, most of the time you have no idea what you're getting as far as calories go for wine. I mean, sure people would say you're drinking a small pour. I mean, these are probably six ounce glasses, I believe. Yeah. Um, I'm a guessing that an average six ounce pour of wine, what, 150? Probably. In that yeah. Category? Mm -hmm. I, my, my guess would be that red wine probably has a bit more um, calories in it, but uh, I, yeah, I would say somewhere around 150. I just want to add that the Castello di Oliria is between uh, $8.99 and 13 dollars depending on where you buy it. Um, it is in Connecticut. I'm not sure if you can find that exactly right in our area, but it is available. And it certainly is, it's the kind of wine that I certainly think um, will fit some picnics or some outdoor mm -hmm. activities, yeah. as long as it's relatively chilled. So uh, check that one out. Yeah. So this one you said you found, how did you find this one? Uh, or roughly or? This one was at Costco. It just uh, every time we leave Costco, we pop our head in the, in the uh, liquor store and just see if there's something that seems like I, I saw this, and we can't we can't actually say the actual price. Let's just say it was between uh, seven and eight dollars, and uh, I was like, you know what? I'll try a bottle. It's probably terrible at that price point. But it's not a Costco marketing. brand. You can get it's this not other a Costco places. brand. You can get that at other places. And uh, if you look this up on Vivino, which Vivino is is um, it's an app that you can kind of take a picture of the label and. And uh, it'll tell you how much this wine typically costs, an average throughout the country. This wine averages around sixteen dollars, uh, apparently, if Vivino is accurate. So they they probably got a, a sweet deal on this. And I said this is probably going to be terrible. I took it home, and I ended up going back and getting a case because for a low calorie wine, I've tried some of those skinny wines that they have, like the Kim Crawford. Yeah, Jim enough. years ago brought some out, oh, they're, they're not good. They're just they not good, good. <laughs> they're awful. And uh, this is the first low calorie wine. Those wines are kind of down in like the 70 calorie range, which this is 100 calories. This is less than most wine, but it's still not on par with those. But I was impressed by the flavor of it for a wine that's low calorie, so. I don't I was take my say, word for it. I wasn't, it. I wasn't pouring it. any because Rocky still had a large pour from the previous <laughs> wine, which is yeah. Seeing as that we don't wine. have a dump bucket today. <laughs> yeah, we I'm do just right here. Go ahead yeah, right there, that's oh, is that our dump bucket? That's our dump well, bucket. I've already okay. shot I was it. hoping nothing would be bad enough to dump, so <laughs> no. we'll see what happens. Okay. Well. So you want to start with the pour on your end there, Rocky? For sure. sure. Yeah. I'm, I don't have the uh, cordless mic today, so. I love the color. That's more the color of a rosé that I like in the summertime, on the lighter side. Thank you. You bet. Even though this one is a little darker, I'm always sort of gravitated sort of the lighter, light salmon color rosés. I think it's beautiful. I love the label on this, actually. Simple. So this is from an area called the Languedoc Roussillon in uh, the south of France. Uh, my favorite rosés, that's my favorite region for rosés, the south of France. A lot of people um, yeah. We'll, we'll tell you that Provence is the best spot for, uh, for the rosés, but for me, I love the south of France uh, for rosés. They just have a little bit more uh, character to them. They're a little bit meatier. They're just... They're minerally? Just minerally. They've got everything that I want and all the things then don't have the things that I don't want. Hmm. Uh, now, I just so. noticed the 93 points on there. I don't see who the rated that. That's pretty high. For a, for a I believe that was James Suckling, because James Suckling writes everything really high. The Sommelier Company. 
I, I've never heard of the sommelier company, uh, but who, apparently oh. there are so many. Spank me hard and roll me over. Oh, yeah? That's, uh, <laughs> that's just the kind of rosé that uh, I can drink all summer long. Went back and bought a case because it was just, yeah. it probably, it, I mean, if it's still there, we'll probably end up getting another case because it's just, it's so I'm glad you're taste this time because you're tasting two distinctly different characteristics totally. from two different areas of the world. And you can really, it really exemplifies that when you see these two together and taste them together. And this is, isn't it, this is light and minerally. It's got that earthy, or that, that rocky, mm -hmm. um, not this rocky, just actual rocky <laughs> kind of sense to it. My name is an adjective, by the way, <laughs> in case anyone's ever getting a lot of bad um, Sylvester Stallone <laughs> interpretations throughout my life. But yes, this it's, it does have kind of a minerally rocky uh, flavor to it. Uh, but it's got the everything that you get out of Provence, which is the strawberry, the watermelon, the cherry. It's got all that stuff. None of it, it's just well balanced with the acidity. The so for when I tasted the Spanish wine, it's got everything that I just listed, but the acidity to it was just a little bit yes. too high. Yep. Right. Um, this one has just the right amount of acidity, just the right amount of um, flavor, just the right amount of alcohol, and that's that's really the key to wine is that you've got all these elements the that, you, that you want to be balanced, and there's an artwork that goes into it, and I'm sure this is a mass, if it's a, at Costco, it's a mass-produced wine. They have just, they've managed to put it all together in a way that's that's packaged and, and sold to the public that works, and it works for me, and I don't like I, I tend to shy away from some of the mass-produced wines, but every now and then I find one and I say, hey, this is this works for me, so I like it. And rosés have exploded over the years. I remember when we, me and Jim started this show back in 2011. We were already, we loved rosés even that far back, but they weren't really that popular about that many years ago, back in 2010, yeah. 11. They, they were out, but nothing they like were, they are now. They were just starting to turn that corner away from the Behringer White Zinfandel that yes. dominated the restaurants in the 90s. And then everybody uh, used to work in restaurant. Our, our our top sellers were always the White Zinfandels, the Behringers, the the Sutter Homes, and it was r really bad. By by standards, if I have one today, I actually I actually ordered a glass at, at a restaurant the other day just so I could say, am I have have I developed my palate or was was I just like am I a snob now? But I tasted it and I said this is really bad, like the, the white Zinfandels that, and so I think what happened is rosé just went away. And then it came back repackaged as something that's not Behringer white Zinfandel. Yeah. And so now it's just exploded in the marketplace. And I'm glad because during the summer months, I don't want a Cabernet. Yeah, yeah, reds are tough to drink in the summer. Yeah. Maybe in the evening, if you're, it's a yeah. cool night, you can do a cab. Like very interesting if we can get to this Bordeaux. But uh, reds are a little tough. You, do you still drink reds in the, in the summertime? Mm, no, what do you gravitate I towards no. in the summertime? Probably beer, Bob. So I yeah. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. We've done a beer show. We've had a beer show. Okay. We should have another beer show. Though. It's been a while. You're right. It's been probably four or five years since we got the guy on for uh, the beer show. But uh, you're getting a big thumbs up on that one. That's uh, plain. What's your take, huh? No, I actually thought that had more flavor than the previous one to me, and it seemed to have more fragrance. But I don't know if that's just my taste buds or what. But so you thought this has more fragrance? Than yeah, the, than the that's previous very one. Interesting. I, I don't know if it was just because it was right after the bubbly one. There. I don't know, but that was uh, that one. I just this most recent one, this one from France. Yeah, much more flavor. Well, uh, like I said, I, it's a thumbs up big time. Because, but you're playing right to my wheelhouse with that with mm -hmm. the French. And I, I love that. I'm definitely going to pick up a couple of those, but uh, that's, a, that's a winner. That's yeah. a winner. Yeah. So before we get to the, another choice that Rocky brought in, Rocky, you have to explain this situation to people. Cause, uh, <laughs> so um, a few episodes back, got above 1,000 views I saw on uh, uh, YouTube. We went to the Union Kitchen, and Vish, the general manager there, was kind enough to taste us on a bunch of their wines. Uh, and what they do there is they have a contest where you go and they have this giant book of all their wines and they have them, it's called the mystery wine. And you, they pour you the wine, they don't tell you what it is. And if you can guess out of that book of like 300 wines what it is, then you get to take the wine home with you. And so yesterday I was walking my dog. My dog's 10 years old. I love her to pieces, but she gets tired. And so I'm walking my dog. We, we get to the center and she needs to take a break. I'm like, well, I mean, my, it's all about my dog. It's not that I just needed some wine and, I, and I'm, I'm kind of weird about, you know, blind tasting. So I take my dog over there and I get the mystery wine. And I ended up, I, I took, I had had this before. And I was like, okay, I, I kind of know where I'm going. 
And so I guessed it. And then the guy who's the general manager there looks at me and he's like, how did you do that? And I'm just like, what? And the, every time we get <laughs> it's one, what I've gotten does. three of them right. He was three. there for two of them. That's and great. he said the yeah. same thing last time. He's like, how did you know that? And I'm like, what do you mean, how do I know that? Like, I just, this is what you do. So anyway, this is a cool wine. It's from Portugal. And the, the reason that I knew it was kind of Spain and Portugal have this kind of high acid profile. There's a lot of minerality in their wines. And I'm looking at their list and I'm going, okay, that my first guess was Spain. I was off. And I looked at this one and I said, this is, this is from Portugal. I get it right. It is, I knew it wasn't the, the most common ones. And I, I can tell you there's three grapes. I looked it up. I can just tell it's from Portugal. I've never heard of these grapes, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce them. You don't have to. There's yeah. really no point in it. I huh. still have a little. You still got a little time to eat. So I'll be curious to see what you guys think of this one. I'm very um, excited. When, when they uh, take it off the mystery, you know, there's still, I think he said there's still a few bottles left of it. So if, if you like it, um, are we, anyway, are we pour it first? There, yeah. Okay, is it courtesy? Is that what? <laughs> got a little yellow coloring there. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's mm -hmm. try this. You might love it. You might hate it. I'm not getting a big aroma. No. It's probably a little bit of uh, rosé still. This is exciting. This, this is always exciting. My first uh, taste going in. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's, it's different. It's different. There's something different. Very different. Right? Wow. When you slam, so you're, you're slam dunk here. You're going in blind. What would you say that this is? What does it taste like? It doesn't taste like anything that I know of. And, and I would be it tastes like Spain or store. Portugal. I would actually, I, I'd be honest with you. I would have said something like a more lively Pinot Grigio. It sort of mm -hmm. has a little bit more flavor. But it, to me, on my palate, it's a little flat. Yeah. But it's still flavorful. Yeah. But it's sort of, it's not going crazy like other wines. Yeah. But it's extremely. Extremely enjoyable. Yeah. Extremely enjoyable. It's got a, so to me, this one has a lot of lemon in it, which is pretty common in um, Spain and Portugal. It's got a little bit of a limey. Yeah, there it is. There's the. Uh, like lemon and lime. There's the lemon like and lime. Right. Yeah. Um, what else? But, but there's something that they call phenolic bitterness in wine, and I don't really know how to describe what that is, but I know what it is when I taste it. And that's one of the dead giveaways for wines from this region is that they have a lot of phenolics to them and it's it's the the best way that I could describe it and this is not going to sound this is not going to be an endorsement by a lot of people hearing this but if you were to take Tupperware and you were to lick the Tupperware like there's just a plastic kind of um, thing yeah, I that, I, that, I, that I describe <laughs> when I say phenolics but but again a lot of people say minerality you want to lick a rock You're not gonna lick you a rock. really want to go lick a rock <laughs> no. but that's the best way that I could describe minerality so that's uh how I describe this, and it's and a really good deal. What is the price point of that? Uh, so I looked it up on Vivino. Uh, it's right around thirteen dollars a bottle. So, and, and I mean, the, their their markups at, at uh, Union Kitchen are not my. I think they're selling this one for like thirty five, forty, somewhere around there. Uh, if you if you like it, it's a, I'm sure it's still available there. We're going to be airing this roughly <coughs> uh, mid June. June. Yep. So yeah. Well, that, uh, then once again, your two, that one, especially even more so than the rosé, that white is, a, is really good. You like that? That's, yeah. that's a perfect summer wine. I mean, yeah, obviously, we can drink wine any time of year. Right. But for us, especially because we gravitate more towards the lighter wines in the summertime, that's going to be outside our next barbecue. No question about that one. That's, that's for damn sure. Are we invited? <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just have to oh, find it somewhere. <laughs> well, you're never right. Oh, and you know what else is cool about this bottle? There's actually Braille on it. So you can, uh, he showed me that when he brought it out. He's like, there's, there's Braille on the bottle. So if you, uh, I don't know. If, if we haven't done a lot of Portuguese ones. I think Jim, one time some years back, had a distributor on, on the show. I was actually away on vacation or something. And he, they did like five or six or seven Portuguese wines in a row. It's probably one of the most wines we've ever tasted on the show, and I missed that one. But uh, we've, we, I don't think we've ever done a Portuguese wine. Super taste. bargain. At Portugal, they have, um, you, you go to a wine store, typically most Portuguese wines are going to sell between 8 and $12 a bottle, yep. and they're going to be all over the map as far as quality goes, but uh, that's you can fun. find some, yeah, that's... Mm.
it, it's fun to search and search when you're not spending. What I hate is if I go to a wine store and I buy, a, this happens with Burgundy more than anything, is I, I want a nice bottle tonight, right? And so I don't normally spend more than 20 bucks, 25 bucks on a bottle ever. I really don't. And people might be shocked to hear that. I like finding a bargain, but every now and then I'll be like, I need something really nice and I'll go spend 35, 40 bucks on a bottle of Burgundy and I'll just get it home and I'll be like, ah, ugh. Like this is a swing and a miss, right? you know? So. Well, we do have time because I'm not getting the wrap up yet. So uh, it's the Chateau Cantaloupe 2015 oh, nice. uh, Côte de Bordeaux. And I opened this up with uh, Carrie uh, a few days ago and we just got preoccupied. We never had a chance to drink it. You can see there's hardly anything missing. So. I'm, I'm assuming it's still got some life to it because it's only been open for three or four days. I did cork it and I put it in the refrigerator. Yeah. So I do like a Bordeaux even in the summertime. So, Tom, I'll give you a little pour there. Sure. Oh, I should have done the dumb bucket, man. Rocky? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, uh, Bordeaux's, they really can't go wrong with a Bordeaux. It, it's not, we got a two minute warning, so we'll have to get through this quickly. But in general, most. Even inexpensive French Bordeaux can be pretty good. There's Rocky's famous pour. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. That's, uh, that's a couple ounces, yeah. All right, so this, once again, is available locally. Please check it out in any of the local stores around here. Yeah, that's a, that's a summer wine. That's yeah. uh, It's not too strong. It's got some good um, some legs on it. Not overly sweet. No, it is not overly sweet, no. On the drier side, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Rock? He's really analyzing with his palate. Mm -hmm. I'm always nervous when that happens. No, no, no. Um, when it comes to Bordeaux, uh, you got Cab Merlot and Cab Franc typically dominate those. They get a few other things that you could put in there. Um, thinking that there's some Cab Franc in this. It's got a little bit of a green kind of a bell pepper element to it. Uh, that you often get in Bordeaux. I like I this one. I do get one. the pepper, yep. Yeah. And it's held up. You said you opened it three days ago? About three days ago, yeah. Brilliant. This is and, held uh, up pretty if you well, look, yeah. This, this could probably be solid for a little bit longer. Mm. Um, these are available, so if you do get a chance to get them, please do. Liquor Depot, I think, um, uh, oh, I can't remember the other place, but I know Liquor Depot, both in the Avon and New Britain has it. Um, regular 15 16 99 but other than that, I think it's a good value. What's the out. vintage on this one? 2015. Oh, that's a good. Yeah. Uh, that's a good uh, vintage for yep. Bordeaux, uh, and it and it's got it's got a lot of flavor to it. It's got you can tell it's eight years old. It's got a little bit of a tobacco it's just got enough to it. thing mm. to it, a, like a forest floor. Mm. So we're, they're wrapping this up. I told you time yep. it goes by fast. It did. That, that was incredible. Right. So uh, this is our first summer show. Um, we'll probably film one other one before we take some time off for vacation, probably in July. And Rocky, looking forward to have you down in Newport this year. Newport. We're have a lot of fun. <laughs> Tom, we're going to come visit you up in Pocket Duck, too. That's I know we always visit. Yeah. So uh, be prepared. We're going to try to film something interesting before uh, the fall. And um, I'm Bobby P. I'm Rocky H. This is Tom. Keep us all in, in your, your wine, wine cellar. cellar.